Hi everyone, this is Mindy and welcome back to my channel. Today I have a card tutorial for you actually featuring two cards using some new products from Pretty Pink Posh. Now these are based on some St. Patrick's Day inspired products, but I feel like we can use these anytime. So I'm going to be starting with the Layered Shamrocks Stencil. This is a two-piece stencil and it's going to fill our entire background with these shamrocks. So I have some hammer mill cardstock. Now this is a bigger sheet, probably more than I really need. It is about five and a half by eight and a half. And I'm going to take some post-it tape, roll it up and place it on the back. And then I can just stick this down to my work surface. There are lots of really great tools out there to hold your cardstock and stencils in place. This is just what I happen to do when I feel lazy. I'm going to place the stencil over my cardstock and hold that down with some washi tape. And then I'm going to be bringing in a light green ink. Now this particular one is Kiwi Ink from Tailored Expressions. And I have a blending brush that I'm gonna start applying this lighter color. I'm gonna go in circular motions and I like to blend left to right and right to left as in the movement of my hand because I wanna make sure I'm covering the entire open area of the stencil. I worked my way up to the top of the stencil removed that first layer and then I'm gonna line this second one up and this second layer just kind of fits nicely in between the first layer. So it's really easy to line these up. Again, I'm gonna hold that down with my washi tape and then I'm going to come in with a darker shade of green. This one happens to be pea pod. Again, I'm going to use my blending brush and I'm gonna use those same motions as blending in the circular, to kind of get all of the area because sometimes with the stencils they have a lip to them so if you don't go in both directions it might have one side darker than the other which would be fine if that's the look you're going for but i want these to have a nice even coverage then i'll remove the washi tape and the stencil and i'm just going to pick this up that posted tape is really great because it has a low tack but not so much that it rips my paper I'm going to clean off my work surface and I don't always show this, but I wanted to show this once in a while where I take rubbing alcohol and I just wipe that away from my glass surface using a paper towel. And then I have this rag that I could see it's well loved that I place my stencil over and I spray that with rubbing alcohol and then just wipe that away. I love using the rubbing alcohol for this because it dries so super quick, but you could take this over and rinse it off in your sink as well. To decorate the front of my card, I'm going to use the Stitched Shamrocks set. This has a lot of really fun designs for the shamrocks. I die cut that out of Kiwi and, uh, nope, this one actually I die cut just from the Peapod cardstock. And then I have the Lucky Shadow Word die that I cut from Peapod cardstock and then the shadow layer from White cardstock and layered those together. I used the Eyelet Rectangles. I am in love with this die right now. And once I run that through with the Peapod cardstock, I'm going to take my craft pick and just poke out anything that was left over there on the die and also on my cardstock. I want my stencil background to fit within the stitched frame. And to do that, I'm trimming this down to three and three eighths by four and five eighths. And I brought out my Fiskars trimmer for this because I found I could read the eighth marks a lot easier on this than I could my other paper trimmers. What this will do is it's going to fit nicely right over that stitched frame that the eyelet rectangles die had created. So once I bring this all in, you're going to see it fits perfectly on there. Sometimes I will place foam tape behind it or even just another piece of cardstock if I want to give it a little bit of lift and dimension. I already have the die cut word lucky that's going to be on the front of the card and I want to add a smaller sentiment. So this one comes from the lucky stamp set that I'm placing in my mini misty tool. I have some black cardstock here that I'm going to prep with an anti-static powder tool and I'm going to ink up my sentiment using some Versamark ink which is a great sticky ink when you're doing heat embossing. So I'm going to gently stamp that down. I don't want to push too hard and risk squishing the letters or distorting them. So I'm going to ink that up one more time, stamp it down gently, and then I'm going to sprinkle on some gold embossing powder. I thought gold would just be a nice touch since these were kind of uh, St. Patrick's Day inspired, but I don't plan on sending them out as St. Patrick's Day cards. So I funnel my excess powder back into my container and replace the lid because I'm a klutz and I don't want to risk tipping that over. And then I'm going to melt that with my heat tool. 
Now, sometimes what I like to do if my cardstock is not too warped is take this back over to my Misty, prep that again with that anti-static powder tool, and repeat these same steps. So I'm going to double heat emboss it. So again, I inked that sentiment up with the Versamark ink, and you're going to notice if you misalignment, misalign it or if it's not lining up properly, it'll give it kind of a watermark look. So being that I didn't see that here, I know that it's stamped directly on top of my embossed area. Again, I can sprinkle on that gold embossing powder, get rid of that excess, and then melt that. And it's going to raise that embossing a little bit. So to tie in some of that gold and also add some interest to my background, I put some gold perfect pearls off on the side and I mixed with a little bit of water and I'm splattering that over my background. I apologize, you can't see it very well off on the side there. Here is some black ink. Now this I don't have to dilute at all because it's pretty liquid. So I just picked that up with a paintbrush and splattered that on my background. A lot of these paintbrushes are just cheapy Crayola paintbrushes you find in those paint sets. I'm going to take a Swiffer cloth and buff over my sentiment to remove any of the excess powder. And then I'm bringing in my mini paper trimmer to trim this down into a thin sentiment strip. This is my favorite trimmer for being able to trim these down into thin strips because I find I can just line these up really well and get a nice thin cut. While I have that cardstock there, I'll trim a couple more pieces that are about the same size or a little bit smaller as my sentiment. And I use these to layer my sentiment up. So instead of trying to cut down thin foam squares, I can just layer my sentiment on top of those strips with some liquid glue and then trim off the excess and keep layering it till I get about the height and dimension that I want. I also like how layering this cardstock adds a lot of stability behind the sentiment. Now, since I had been playing with gold splatters and gold heat embossing, I decided to die cut the word lucky from a matte gold cardstock. So I'm just taking my craft pick and poking through those release holes. And then I can take some liquid glue and line the back of that word. And I'm going to place it right over the top of that green die cut word. So it's going to layer nicely. One of the reasons I like using the liquid glue for this is it gives me that little bit of wiggle room to adjust it as needed. So I have a lot of shine for it and I really like how that turned out. The green looked really good, but I thought this just broke up all of that green on my background. Now I can work on the assembly of my card. Since I already have my background attached to that eyelet rectangle, I'm going to layer the back of my shamrocks with a thin foam tape. This is using the Big Mama Roll from Simon Says Stamp. It is a very, very thin tape. It's just enough to give it that um, kind of lift from the background. You could also just die cut the shamrocks a couple more times from cardstock and layer that together as well. And then I'm going to take the sentiment and I'm going to line the back of that with my liquid glue. Now this is the Gina K Designs Connect Glue that I have in a fine tip bottle. And I'm going to place that right over the top, kind of at an angle. And I'll take my smaller strip sentiment, add some liquid glue behind there, and place that underneath. I love, again, using the liquid glue because of that little bit of wiggle room time that I have to adjust it. I'm going to take a side folding card base. Now, this is out of a heavyweight card stock. And I personally like to have side folding cards. So I reinforce that fold with a bone folder and I'm going to place some foam strips behind my panel. Again, this is going to give it that little bit of lift and dimension, but if you don't like a lot of dimension to your cards, you could just add some tape runner to the back and place it right on the front of your card front. So I'll remove the backing of those foam strips and place this over the front of my card base, making sure I have that nice even white border around the edge. And to finish this off, I'm going to use these gold metallic pearls from Pretty Pink Posh. I'm going to place three up top and two at the bottom. I like to use an odd number of embellishments, and I'm going to finish that card off. So this is card number one, and then my second card for you is going to be creating a shaker card, and this is the Shamrock Shaker. So this is a two-piece die set. This first one I'm going to cut is your base layer. So I'm cutting that out of a light green cardstock. Again, this is Kiwi from Tailored Expressions. And I'm going to take that same frame over a darker color cardstock, line up that second one in the inside. So this is going to create the frame for our shaker. Now, when I'm holding this down, 
I really want to make sure I'm using the tape and holding on the die because I, I really want the die to stay in place. I want to cut this multiple times from white cardstock to layer it together to create the well for my shaker. You'll see what I mean here in just a moment. This is the first piece I created so you can see how it created that frame. Now you don't have to do a shaker. You could just leave it like this, which is really fun. But since my posted tape was covering the die pieces to hold it together, I die cut multiple pieces from heavy cardstock. I also took the base layer and die cut that from acetate because I need to protect my shaker bits. Now I can start layering those frames together. Again, I'm going to use liquid glue. My top piece is going to go over that acetate and you want to be just very careful with your liquid glue because if it squishes out, it's going to get inside the window of your acetate and you'll be able to see it. So I put something heavy over the top and let that sit. And I'm going to take the other frames that I die cut from white cardstock and layer those together with that liquid glue. Now I think in total, I probably did about maybe four layers of the white cardstock. You just wanna make sure you're building up your well thick enough that it's going to uh, hold the shaker bits that you're planning on using. I'm going to be using seed beads which doesn't take up a lot of space. Now the piece with the acetate, I'm going to carefully line with the liquid glue. I try to keep the liquid glue towards the outer edge so it doesn't seep in to that uh, inside window of the acetate and then place that over the white frames that I just layered together. So I will place something heavy on here and let that sit for a little bit so it's really secured together. Now, when that is dry, I can flip it over and I'm going to be using the Lucky Day Shaker Beads. I thought these were super pretty because it's a mix of different shades of green. There's some white and there's some gold seed beads in here. So I'm going to carefully sprinkle those in the inside of my well. And then I am going to be taking the liquid glue, again, going around the very outer edges, being careful not to bump my shaker because I don't want those beads spilling out everywhere. So I'm going to add the liquid glue all the way around and then I'm going to take that base piece, flip it over and line that up over the back. Now I made sure to kind of hold this down for maybe 30 seconds to a minute. I really wanted that to adhere together before I flipped it over because I didn't want to risk everything falling apart and beads spilling everywhere. So once I have that here, it created the most fun shaker. And I think this was the first time I ever used the seed beads in my shaker. So while that shaker is drying, I am going to create a background. Now I'm not gonna go through the steps in detail because this is very similar to the first background I created. This one is using the layered heart lattice, another one of my favorite stencils out of this release. I did the first layer in a light green ink, which was or light green light gray ink, which was oyster. The second layer is the hearts, which I thought would be really fun to do in green. And I believe this was a peapod color, same as my other cardstock and inks I used before. So this creates just a really soft, delicate background. Now I had already gone ahead and trimmed that stencil background down to three and three quarters by five inches, added with foam tape to a card panel, and then attached that shaker panel or the shaker part with some liquid glue as well. I layered together this stamped word lucky using the lucky stamp set and coordinating die and added that to the front. Now, once again, I used liquid glue and I'm gonna place that heavy block over the top and let that sit. And I'm gonna leave it just like that. I'm not gonna add any additional sentiments. I can write a personal message in the inside or I could put lucky to know you. Some of the sentiments from that stamp set can go on in the inside of the card. But I think this is just a really good card to send to a friend. And then here is the first card I created, a lot more green involved, but I love how these can be friendship cards. Now these are just some of the products being released from Pretty Pink Posh for their January 2024 release. Be sure to check out the rest of it because it is amazing and I have a lot more projects to share using that release. I will be sharing those in the upcoming weeks. For right now, all of my supplies are listed down below in the video description and over on my blog. I want to thank you so much for joining me today and I'll see you again soon.